Hello and welcome to Energy Connect Discussions, where we bring you the latest insights and updates from the world of energy. Our discussion today takes place ahead of the California Hydrogen Convention, which will be inaugurating later this month. We will delve into the pivotal role of the Boilermakers Union in shaping the energy industry, the promising pathways of hydrogen in decarbonizing industrial economies, and the exciting prospects of the hydrogen revolution for Boilermakers and related trades. I am very delighted to be joined by Johnny Becker, the Marketing Manager for International Brotherhood of Boilermakers. Johnny, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you please tell us more about the Boilermakers Union and its contribution to the energy industry? I would be happy to. I understand this might be the first time some people have heard about the Boilermakers and what it is we do. Uh, simply put, we're the hardworking men and women uh, that have built the energy industry in the United States and Canada for the last 145 years. That's starting from the time of the Industrial Revolution to powering the country for the first time uh, through where we're at today. Uh, we've Boilermakers have done everything energy in between. Most of our work has come from steam, uh, which has historically been the most efficient way to generate power. We could talk about that a little bit later, but that's where the term Boilermaker comes from is when we were developing steam engines back in the 1800s and early 1900s, that's where your power was coming from. Uh, the Boilermakers have taken it much further than that, uh, starting back in, oh, I'd say the 1930s, we've been part of this green energy revolution. A lot of people don't think it's been going on for that long, but that's when we had water power with our dams, right? Um, working in Shasta, uh, up in Northern California, Tennessee Valley Authority did a lot of hydropower through there. Uh, and that was really the first green technology that the Boilermakers got involved in about 100 years ago. Uh, that goes forward. There's a lot of other green projects the Boilermakers have been involved in. We've really been always on the cutting edge. Whenever there's something new, whenever there's new technology or an engineer comes up with something in a lab that says this is a way we can make power for people, that's great. Then it goes to uh, our members that, that make it happen. So whether that's nuclear in the 60s, putting up the first wind turbine in the 70s, 80s, uh, we started doing that work. Uh, all the way through to today, we do the first... Um, bag houses, scrubbers, catalysts for refineries, making our existing power plants cleaner. Uh, we've also been involved in a groundbreaking technology in places like Ivanpah using thermal energy, solar thermal rather than uh, photovoltaic. It's another type of solar power that's, again, using steam. It's an inverted boiler. A bunch of mirrors shine up and heat up the water source, and that makes power to plenty of people down in Southern California, Nevada, and the Mojave. Um, to follow that up, why would why do you think hydrogen is the ideal pathway to decarbonize industrial economies? I feel a, a pretty strongly about this. Uh, as we look to decarbonize, hydrogen is really the the missing factor that we need to start investing heavily into. Boilermakers, uh, a lot of the trades have been pioneering all of the above, and that's not only to get our members out to work to get us you know the paychecks that our members have come to enjoy hardworking blue collar folks that go out and you know, work in these industrial jobs and they're able to take care of their families, which is not something to be taken for granted in California, especially if you're living in the Bay Area or Los Angeles. Inflation, uh, and not to mention the already high cost of living in these areas, times are a little bit tough. So first and foremost, we, we push hydrogen for that reason, to keep working class families gainfully employed, but also to keep the economy of California going strong. Uh, really, with hydrogen, what you're going to see is that the technology already exists now where we can decarbonize our existing natural gas power plants that we have out there. Um, a lot of work that the Boilermakers did 20 to 30 years ago, what was considered clean back then uh, was these natural gas units, right? Things changed and the Boilermakers evolved with that. There's technology now that where we don't have to shut down all this existing infrastructure we have. Rather, we could put hydrogen into these facilities and start uh, generating completely emission-free at some point by doing a phase-in of hydrogen. Further on that point, I'll keep going on here. There's so many reasons why we want to get hydrogen out there um, at scale, right? The more hydrogen we can produce, the better for the economy, the better for the taxpayer in California. Um, not everybody is settled to have a Tesla, right? Not everybody wants to have an electric vehicle. We're seeing those rates drop off, which is 
what we expect to see with supply and demand, right? The early adopters have gotten them, the people who it makes sense for have, have purchased their electric vehicles. Everybody else is having a gas vehicle, and we know the emissions that come with that. With hydrogen, you can drive. Um, you know, what I'm seeing is people who drive, you know, maybe their commute. For some of our construction workers, their commute may be well over 100 miles a day, and they don't have a charging station. Hydrogen would let those people with the longer commutes, but also people that are used to things like RVs, uh, four-wheelers, you know, motorcycles, things like that, we could start to fill up with hydrogen and not have to sacrifice quality of life while also still completely decarbonizing our emissions while we're on the road. And I think that that's my last point I want to make on this is hydrogen is really the path forward for the, the people of California to continue to enjoy the quality of life that we've all gotten used to, right, over the last however many years, right, since electricity came into um, California, let's really say since the early 2000s with Enron, anybody who remembers that time period with rolling blackouts, rolling brownouts were coming out, and we're getting to a point where we're kind of flirting with that again as we're getting as far as we are in the green energy revolution. And what I mean by that is if you're driving around in California, um, come summertime here in a couple months, it's just starting off in May. So by July, August, we'll see the billboards again to have a flex alert, keep your power off between 4 to 10 p.m. Basically telling the people of California that when you come home from work and maybe it's 110 degrees outside, don't run your air conditioning. Uh, that's just ridiculous. You know, power should be available for everyone and power should be affordable enough for everyone. Um, not to spend too long on this question, but we know energy rates have risen, right? Hydrogen is, again, really going to start being the all-of-the-above solution, right? Now, if you put in hydrogen, we're cleaning up completely emission-free fuel source in addition to all of the work California has done in solar and wind, uh, geothermal, you know, biomass, all these other types of cleaner technologies that we're getting to. Hydrogen can really help us keep our quality of life, keep the lights on, keep the air conditioner running, and most importantly, it's going to be affordable if we start producing it at scale. You mentioned at the beginning that all of the uh, Boilermakers come from a steel background. So how how would the skill sets um, in welding, fabrication, and other areas benefit the hydrogen revolution? Well, I really appreciate that question. Any chance we get to talk about you know the skilled work that our men and women do every day? We've heard actually that there's been a misconception, not coming from yourself, but. Uh, how are the Boilermakers going to do it? You're such a legacy organization. You've been around for over 140 years. Are the Boilermakers ready to take on this uh, green energy revolution, right, to build into hydrogen? And we are already there. And that's we've had to have this conversation with policymakers, and we're happy to do it. Uh, and just to say that these are new skill sets that have to be learned, right? Boilermakers are the best in the business when it comes to welding, fabrication, rigging, uh, fitting up a, a different piping, tubing. And that's really what hydrogen comes down to, right? Anytime you pass by a refinery or a power plant, you're just looking at a different type of chemistry set, right? Converting a fuel source into energy. And that's what hydrogen does as well, right? So the training that needs to happen is already being done. We have uh, over 5,000 members in California. They're trained. They're ready to go. Uh, many more than that across the country that are looking to make this happen. And when it comes to people in the trades, you put a blueprint in front of us, we're going to figure out how to build it right. So like I mentioned earlier, when it comes to yeah, an engineer can think it up, however it needs to happen, the Boilermakers are already there and ready to go. Our apprenticeship program too, I'll take a little bit of an opportunity to talk about uh, what we do for training of our membership. And it's a real point of pride for us. 6,000 hours on the job, right? Uh, so these men and women are getting the equivalent of a four-year degree. They're taking courses in math, trigonometry, uh, all kinds of stuff, engineering basics, blueprint reading, not to mention their hands-on where, again, they're learning to weld anything that comes in front of them. The most difficult of welds boilermakers can do, you know, when there's a tough job, that's when they call us out. So our membership, we've been talking with them lately, they're really looking forward to getting involved in this. And not only to put their skills to use, but to have something they're proud of, right? To be able to say, hey, I built that, right? There's no more point of pride to a craftsperson than driving by, a, let's say, a new hydrogen facility and saying, hey, I built that. That's 100% emission-free. I built that. My fellow Boilermakers built that. 
What are your thoughts on the role of the California Hydrogen Convention? Um, as we mentioned, it's coming up uh, later this month. <laughs> um, and uh, well, how do you see it being a catalyst for low carbon future? And what are you most excited about at the inauguration of this event? Well, it really excites me that we're talking about hydrogen as as the low carbon future, right? Because for so long, it's been solar and wind. And myself, our organization, the trades, we don't have any problem with solar and wind. We're just trying to get out the message of saying there's hydrogen out there, right? Hydrogen could be that real push that gets us to 100% emission free, right? It's the missing source. Um, so excited to be a part of it. Excited to be a, a, a keynote sponsor that we are at the event. That's why we put our our resources here. What we're looking to get out of the event, what we're looking forward to most is just the networking possibilities, the partnerships, the getting the message out, right? It's speaking with you to get the word out about the Boilermakers and how eager we are to get on this work. I would extend that message to, to everybody who comes through here, all the industry leaders in hydrogen. What the Boilermakers pride ourselves on is our partnerships, right? Labor working together with business to put our people out to work, but also to improve uh, the economy of California as a whole, right? That's what the union does, improve people's livelihoods. And we've talked about so many ways of doing that uh, through hydrogen, not just the paychecks people are going to receive to be a part of these good projects, but lowering the cost of electricity, right, is so crucial right now, lowering the cost of, of fuel to drive, having a, a third alternative, right, gasoline, electric, and now hydrogen could come in and Start to give, uh, you know, the ordinary working person in California some relief at the pump. So all excited about all of that and all excited about putting our resources forward and uh, meeting with these industry leaders, meeting with business and saying, what can labor do to help? What could we do to roll up our sleeves and get to work? Uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, whatever the scale of the project is, whatever the schedule of the hydrogen project that's coming out before us, the Boilermakers can rise to meet that need. We're going to ensure the quality is there. We're going to assure that job gets done on budget, on time, done right the first time. And most importantly, that it's going to get done safe. That's what we're the experts as. And again, to reiterate, being excited to meet with industry leaders and being at the forefront of hydrogen, having something our members can be proud of, decarbonizing, making a, a greener world for everybody. And, uh, you know, it's what we've done, like I said, for a hundred years in the past and looking forward to get the message out that when we go together with our with our industry leaders, with our business leaders, the Boilermakers can help and we can go far. Excellent. Thank you so much, Johnny, for your time. This was fabulous input. Um, before we go, just a quick reminder that the California Hydrogen Convention is going to be taking place on the 29th and the 30th of May at Los Angeles, California. You can register at CaliforniaHydrogen.com and a big Thank you to everyone watching and see you again at another Energy Connects discussion very soon. Until then, goodbye.